Hi there, welcome to this Unit 1 vodcast on the Berlin Blockade. This video is available at relentlesshistory.wordpress.com as a PowerPoint, but also as a YouTube video, and it will also be linked into the Twitter uh, channel we have, which is at Brayton History. Okay, let's get started. Today we're going to have a look at the Berlin Blockade, what, the act, what caused it, what the actions were during this, how the US responded to it, and what the consequences were. So, to begin with, we can see a little cartoon here of Stalin as a cat. Anybody who's got a cat knows that cat like to play with things, especially little creatures. And here, it's playing with a little cat, with a little mouse, sorry, uh, titled Berliners. The hole is stuffed up so the mouse can't go anywhere. So it looks like Stalin's got the upper hand. We'll see what incidents were that created this. So, as I said, we're going to have a look at why the Berlin blockade began what the American options were, how did they respond to it, and understand the impact the blockade had on the Cold War. So to begin with, let's just recap on what post-war Germany was like. Following the end of World War II, Germany was divided up into zones of occupation. The British had a significant area in the, the northwest of Germany, the French, in the blue here, took a section on. Uh, the Americans took on a large section down here to the south and a few areas up here where it needed to control access to ports and stuff. And then here, in the red, is the Soviet zone of occupation. Now, the capital, Berlin, was also divided up. A French, a British, American and a Soviet zone. Now, as you can see here, it's in the Soviet zone of occupation and with the kind of the Cold War paranoia that the Soviet Union, in particular Stalin, had about capitalist democracies uh, and the threat that they posed, you can imagine that Berlin was a, was a sore point for them. If you remember um, from the Yalta conference, Eisenhower uh, and, and Roosevelt uh, they were talking about this idea of you know being in Europe for only about two years. So, in the short term, you could, at that point, they were kind of seeing the the end game of controlling all of Berlin. Probably, they didn't really see what would happen when Roosevelt died and Truman took over. That you would have this kind of you know anti-communist rhetoric coming on and and more of a threat. So, what started the Berlin blockade? Well. Using John D. Clare's fantastic resources, the best way to describe it is Kabam. Cold War aims by Zonia aid new currency. Cold War. The Cold War is just getting started. And, and for Stalin in particular, getting a victory in here is key. He wants to show that he is he doesn't gonna get he isn't gonna get pushed around. He doesn't want he he, he doesn't want to simply just be always responding to situations. He wants to lead on, on situations. For a while now he's been seeing the rhetoric from the United States and the UK with the Iron Curtain speech, he's been seeing the Truman Doctrine, he's been seeing the Marshall Plan, he needs to do something different. So, Ames. Stalin wants a weak Germany, he's wanted that ever since World War II, and the West are wanting to rebuild Germany, so we've got different aims here, and it's that conflict of intent, and how each perceives that that's going to be the, one of the big causes. Linked into that, we're talking Bisonia. The British and the US unification of their zones angers Stalin. Going back to the first point, Stalin wants a weak Germany. He sees the British and, and the US unifying Germany, and to him that seems like they're trying to rebuild Germany to be a threat against the Soviet Union. Linked in with that is the aid. The Soviets were also angered by the Marshall Plan. They're especially angered by its use in West Berlin. Going back to that map, West Berlin, the British, the American, the French zones, they're going to get this money in rebuilding West Berlin. And how are East Berliners, how are East Germans going to feel about seeing the, you know, the, the capitalism working in, in West Berlin? One of the big triggers, though, is the new currency. Linked to Bisoni was the creation of a new German currency. And again, Stalin saw it as an attempt to rebuild a strong Germany against the USSR, and that's the final straw. So, on the 24th of June 1948, 
like this cartoon shows you. You can see the arms here out stretching round Berlin. The Russians stop all road and rail traffic into Berlin, including actually also the canals. But we can see here the British, the American and the French flags for their zones of occupation. They're being squeezed by this by this Russian bear in the you know, rather apt bear hug. So you know, the Stalin blockades Berlin. And what reason does he give? Well, he says he is defending the East German economy against this new currency, which was going to ruin it. The Western powers saying are simply that Stalin was trying to force them out of Berlin. Now, Stalin was extremely paranoid. He saw the, the need for a threat to, to secure his position, to explain his actions. So, in red, we can see the reason he gives, but it's really that he's trying to kind of push the West out so he can... He can seize control of Berlin and East Germany with, with greater force against this perceived threat of a stronger West Germany. Sorry, Western Germany. So, if we move on, how do the US react? Well, some argue that they should fight their way in and break through, hold the roads to West Berlin. However, this would really be really impractical. Fighting your way through East, the Eastern uh, Germany, the Russian zone of occupation, it's just going to lead to a war, and that would make the US, the UK, the West seem as the aggressors. Some others argued that West Berlin was rather symbolic, and it was too high a price to pay to start a war. Now, that again wasn't very useful for Truman. He doesn't want to be seen as being beaten by Stalin so easily, so he's got to think of an, an option. And this is this third option that comes up of airlifting supplies in, hopefully breaking the blockade that way. Now, this was an acceptable way to counter the threat, and the reason for that really is shown up in this cartoon here. We can see the stalks flying in, coal and food. And look at Stalin here with his shotgun. These stalks, they're not very, you know, warlike birds here. And what it shows is that the US have found a way to act out against Stalin and this Soviet blockade, but be non-aggressive in doing this. It would be up to the Russians to be the aggressors by shooting a plane down. They're simply finding an alternative way in that hasn't been blocked. So the blockade lasts for 318 days, 11 months. The Berliners had to survive unlimited rations. They had about four hours of electricity a day. And the operation, the airlift, was called Operation Vittles. Now, the Soviet authorities offered to provide West Berlin with essential supplies, but this was rejected for, well, you know, quite clearly symbolic reasons, but also simply to maintain the, the Western influence on West Berlin. Now, actually, the, the, the airlift itself was so successful that by the end of it, they were supplying more food and more supplies than Berlin needed. They ended up stockpiling it just in case the blockade was brought back in again. And you can see, as you can see here, the blockade lasted from June 48 to September 49. Now, during this time, 275,000 planes transported 1.5 million tons of supplies. Planes were typically landing at Berlin's Tempelhof Airport, one of three, every three minutes. And by the 12th of May 1949, Stalin abandoned the blockade. However, supplies kept flying in until September, just in case this was relaunched. Now, this did a number of things. On a purely propaganda level, it made actually the Americans, the British, and the, and the French, it made them seem like, you know, the heroes to the Germans, to the West Berliners especially, for, for breaking this siege, this blockade that was going on. Okay, so what were the results of the Berlin blockade and the subsequent airlift? Well, clearly, U.S.-Soviet relations grew worse, hence why I've put it in red. Now the Cold War was fixed. Uh, there was a clear division between the between the West and the East. To symbolise this further, Germany was now split into two. In May 1949, the three Western states of the UK, the US and France unified their zones to create a West Germany. And as a response to that, in October 1949, East Germany was created uh, as a reaction against that. Another uh, development was the creation of NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organisation. This was established in 1949 and included 
uh, most of the nations of Western Europe, America, Canada, and it was really designed as a new collective security group because of the, the perceived threat from the Soviet Union. And it's, it had a stipulation that an attack on one was an attack on all, in which all would have to respond to this. Uh, and it was a, really as a direct consequence of the Berlin blockade. A final aspect to this was that it led to a development in the arms race. The US and the USSR developed their military might with even more effort. The, it was rather odd that as a result of the blockade, which was found to be a non-violent approach, led to the development of a, of a greater military might. Um, one of the reasons perhaps for this was because the Americans put atomic bombers uh, on UK air bases as a reaction against the Berlin blockade, just in case the, the, the blockade took a, a turn for the worse, um, or maybe as a threat to the USSR against any further military uh, military uh, intent towards Berlin but you can see here that we've got these we've got the relations getting worse Germany's now split NATO and the arms race well I hope you found this useful and other videos will be made will be coming up soon on different aspects of the course but remember you can find all these at relentlesshistory.wordpress.com